Hello, my name is Jonathan Osborne and I'm Professor of Science Education here in the Graduate School of Education at Stanford University. You can tell from the accent, however, that I'm not an American. I'm a Brit. I've been here for 10 years. And my field of research is science education. In this short video, I'm going to try and give you an overview of what I'm going to be talking about in my presentation at early next year. The title of my talk is Argumentation, Interaction and Learning, Lessons from Science Education. My goal is to share with you what we have learnt about this important epistemic practice and what those lessons might have for all teaching and learning. Now, if you don't have a science background, the sciences are probably a bit of a mystery. Clearly, they matter as the sciences occupy the epistemic high ground. So why? And what does that mean for the teaching and learning of sciences? And perhaps more importantly, what does that mean for the teaching and learning of all subjects? The sciences matter because, at their very core, they are committed to the uh, idea of evidence as the basis of belief. In that sense, the discipline is the foundation of the Enlightenment. In addition, they also represent a tremendous intellectual achievement. The history of science is the history of vision and argument. The vision bit comes from the need to imagine the world not as it is, but as it might be, something else. For instance, just take the idea that day and night are caused by a spinning earth. Your senses clearly tell you that it's the sun that moves. To argue in contrast that it is we who are moving is what Galileo called the rate of reason. But we do. Moreover, we even ask elementary children to believe in these ideas and these arguments. To believe, for instance, that the earth on which they stand is moving so fast that it's going faster than the speed of sound at the equator. The fact that we can make such arguments at all is because scientists have gathered evidence from which they can construct the case for this and other beliefs. So from the simple idea that air has mass, to the idea that continents were once one, to the idea that you look like your parents because every cell in your body carries a chemically coded message about how to reproduce you, these are all complex and sophisticated arguments that have to be made to believe in what many might think are a crazy set of ideas. It's this conception which is at the heart of the framework for the K-12 science education which fresh framed the American science curriculum and to which I contributed. In there, there is a figure which outlines essentially this conception of science as consisting of three spheres of activity. A sphere where people engage in investigations and observations, a sphere where they hypothesize about ideas and theories about to explain it, and importantly, a sphere where they engage in argumentation to evaluate those particular ideas. Now, traditionally, science or school science has not much offered many opportunities to engage in argument. My research and other has shown that the opportunities for this kind of interaction are minimal. Rather, it's best characterized as the teaching of received dogma, often appearing as a miscellany of facts. As a corollary, the structure of the discipline is often lost for most students. Attempting to change the current pedagog pedagogic paradigm has required a program of research going back 20 years. It has been a long journey. During that time, we have looked at the nature of the tasks that might support argumentation in the science classroom, how we might train teachers to implement argumentation in the science classroom, and the social and epistemic structure that will support student argumentation. Along the way, we have, of course, made mistakes. We've also learned much about the challenges of implementing this epistemic practice in the classroom. In this work, my colleagues and I have produced materials for teacher professional development, such as this ideas pack, written materials for use by teachers, such as this book, and published articles in prestigious journals, such as this one in science. And we've also researched how students' ability with argumentation progresses and develop this learning progression, which I will talk about. So in this talk, I really look forward 
to sharing with you much of this work, what the implications are, and I very much hope to see you there at the conference. <laughs>